Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Our gathering song is hymn number 596, Christ Be Our Light, 596. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us acknowledge our sins, brothers and sisters, and thus prepare for the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may find the right path and know the light they profess in the name of Christian. So give us the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God, 
with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What's written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers. He went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. And the next day, he took out two silver coins, gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him, and if you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There are a few passages of sacred scripture that many of us can just have roll off our tongue or recite from memory, and certainly today's gospel is one of those. But unfortunately, that kind of word of God is oftentimes like the Eucharist, so well known, common to us, taken for granted, treated in a way that doesn't show the great esteem we should have, certainly for the body and blood of Christ himself, but in this case, a very foundational teaching of what it means to be merciful, to be as Christ. The Good Samaritan, of course, is Christ himself, who stooped to us. God, who humbled himself and took on human flesh so that we could be raised to divinity, who healed the wounds of our sin and division would have eternal consequences, who then not only brought us healing, but then entrusted us to the church that we might continue to be healed and strengthened to move forward until he comes again in glory. The question in the gospel today is the one that I hope echoes in our heart and prayer throughout the coming week. And who is my neighbor? Neighborliness is not about selectivity. It's not about choosing who we will see as our neighbor, who's on the in and who's on the out. If we have the audacity to pray our Father, then the word our implicates all of us. Each person who calls one God Father, therefore our sisters and brothers to one another, those are the neighbors whether they are those who inspire us, who please us, or who challenge us and teach us patience. This man encounters his opportunity, as did the priest, as did the Levite, and I'm sure many others. They're the only two mentioned aside from the Samaritan, but I'm sure there are many others who just walked by. Maybe they didn't feel they would be able to solve the problem. And so they abandon any effort. If we can't do everything, at least we can do something. But oftentimes, going with the previous thought absolves us from any responsibility. Or in many cases, it might have been, well, I have to get to this. I'm important. I've got this commitment. I've got this thing to get to. That's the one I think that haunts our lives, that keeps us from stopping, whether it be to help those in need, or whether it be to appreciate the simple things the Lord puts in the way of our life. I've got something else. I've got, I've got. The old saying is so often true. Sometimes we look back and realize we're so busy making a living that we forgot to make a life. 
we don't even notice anymore. We ask ourselves such questions. When was the last time I perceived something and then just took the time to do it? Or when was the last time I was able to just relax and share a meal and not just hurry up and get this done to get to the next thing? And so indeed, the Lord is calling us to be attentive to the wounded and the broken along our way, the ones that we can bring a particular comfort or healing to, to not be selective, for we all call one God Father. If we seek to live out the commandments, as we heard in the first reading, we don't have to try, well, what does it mean? Uh, where can I read about that? It's not far away. We heard it so plain. It's not at some mountaintop. It's not across the ocean that you say, well, who's going to get it? Who's going to explain it? It's already in our hearts. We know it. We know when I should put this aside and I should give this person these few minutes. We know it when we should say, I should be the one to offer this. We just have to pray in this liturgy today that beautiful prayer that we use throughout the year. Lord, give us the wisdom to know what should be done. But then give us the courage and the strength to do what we come to know. Indeed, the words of the confidior at the beginning of Mass roll easily off our lips, sometimes too quickly. I have sinned through what I've done or what I've failed to do. The week ahead is not to beat ourselves up for it, because the road to Jericho runs right through our neighborhood, right through our family, right through our parish, right through our city. And there is much to encounter along the way. Are we the passerbys? Because after all, we're kind of busy. But we don't want to get involved. Or will we indeed stoop down, whether it be to help or to enjoy, but in all cases, to encounter Christ? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trusting faith, we bring our needs to the Lord. For all who shepherd the people of God, our Holy Father, our Bishop, our Pastor, and our pastoral staff, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to embrace opportunities to allow our faith to issue forth in action and our love to be manifested in deeds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are rediscovering their Catholic faith and exploring our parish life, may they discover the gift of his mercy as they encounter Jesus and experience his love in us as his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, for victims of violence, for those cast aside, and for all who seek to bring them the compassion and healing of Jesus, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another and for all our departed loved ones, especially Sarah McComb, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 483, where charity and love prevail, 483. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you and grant that what is consumed by those who believe may have an ever greater cause of holiness in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. 
And so with angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of the passion and death and resurrection, <coughs> we offer you, O Lord, <coughs> the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, Praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Worship aid number three, one heart, one mind.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, the saving effects in us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. We urge you to look through the bulletin for important announcements, particularly one that this weekend throughout our diocese, various pastors are uh, being uh, reassigned, and transfers are occurring. Among them, Father Brian Kennedy, who is a member of the Redemptorist community and has served our diocese for the past few years, will be returning to his community and to his work in the missions. Father Brian was kind enough to come to Portsmouth each week to celebrate um, the Mass in Spanish on Sunday afternoons. However, next Sunday will be the last uh, Mass in Spanish on Sunday. After that, it will be discontinued as Father Brian 
uh, will be leaving. Details about a lot of other activities in the parish and upcoming events are all spelled out in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 415, Church of God, Elect and Glorious, 415. Church of God. 